It is 7.30, so I'm going to let in some members of the public. Great. I think on the commissions and we're just waiting on Nick. Is All right, I think we're all here. Thanks. Yeah. All right, great. Let's call this meeting a CPDC to order. Um, and um, as customary these days, Julie, do you want to start us off um, the rules for uh, Zoom and how we'll con conduct this meeting? Yeah, sure. Hi, everybody. Um, tonight's meeting is the CPDC meeting of Monday, July 12th. Um, it is being recorded by RCTV and over Zoom. Um, from staff, there's me, Julie Mercier, Community Development Director, and Andrew McNichol, Staff Planner. From the commission, we have Chair John Weston, we have Nick Safina, Heather Klisch, Pamela Adrian, and Tony Durezzo. Um, the way these meetings usually run um, is that we hear a presentation from the development team, and then the commission has a chance to ask questions um, and have a dialogue with the development team and then the chair will open it up to public comment. At the time that public comment happens, if you wish to, to speak, you can either raise your hand like this or you can use the raise hand feature in Zoom. Um, and when you're acknowledged, please state your name and address for the record. Um, that's helpful to us. And then in the meantime, anyone who's not talking, please stay muted so everyone else on the call can um, hear the person who is speaking. Um, and please refrain from using chat unless you're having a technical issue and you want to chat me directly. Um, thank you. Thank you, Julie. Um, so the first item on our agenda is a continued public hearing for 40R plan review at 18 Woburn Street. 
Yes, I think Josh Latham is here for that. Uh, late breaking news is that they will be requesting a continuance for that hearing um, to August 9th. Okay. Um, so, um, sorry, I can share that request on the screen. to see. All right, so we will reschedule um, or continue this, I guess, continue the, the public hearing until August 9th. And Julie, do you have a, or Andrew, do you have a time? Yeah, we think 8.30 will work. Okay. So, We'll continue this public hearing till August 9th at 8.30 for um, 18 Woburn Street. Sweet. Um, you should take a vote on that. Or should we still make a motion? Yeah. Uh, so, move, so moved. Uh, so moved. Who, I'm sorry, who was that that seconded? Pam did. Okay. Heather did. Heather. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Got in faster than I did. All right. So um, roll call on that. We'll start with Pam. Yes. Uh, Heather. Yes. Nick. Yes. Tony. Yes. John. Yes. Um. So I think we have to wait till 8.30 to open our next hearing. So I think we can take our other business if that's okay with you guys. Start down at the bottom. Sure thing. Let's do that. Um, so Andrew, any specific order here or just stop from, start from the top with Grandview Road subdivision? I think we can start at the top, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I believe Adam Goncalves and Giovanni Fedora, project engineer, are present for the uh, definitive subdivision plan endorsement. Uh, short summary is they have met the conditions outlined in our decision to um, have the plan voted for endorsement, which were some minor plan adjustments that included some language changes to the stormwater report as well as some uh, minor dimensions added to some additional plan sheets. And they also have provided proof of ownership for the project. Um, so they virtually met all our conditions to do the endorsement, but the, of course the board can discuss. And Adam, please add anything. Uh, that's perfect, thank you so much. Um, I think we are all set to proceed. Actually, I've been working with uh, Josh uh, with uh, Penny Jean. So I think we're in great shape. Uh, just looking for the board's uh, approval. Any thoughts? Okay, great. Um, so, Andrew, do, can you, do you have a site, the um, site plan of that just so that we... Yes, pulling that up right now. So this was a four lot definitive subdivision that the CPDC voted on in on February 8th, 2021. Um, in the meantime, since then, the engineer has been working with conservation as there is were some minor changes here around the buffer zone uh, with some blueberry, with some bushes, I think, are replacing uh, what were uh, berms and small vegetation. So he's been working with the conservation administrator on some plantings up in this area. And then we also requested that uh, utility lights and utility poles be added back to the plans because they were removed. Uh, so they've added one back to the intersection here the and another on the cul-de-sac. And as we get that request a lot after the fact, uh, so we wanted to make sure that those were maintained. And 
that was about it for changes to the plan set. And then they've added some dimensions across here for the cul-de-sac width. Okay. Any questions from the board? Uh, yes, I still see the name Penny Lane on the drawings. I didn't know if they had made a request of the town to change Grandview to Penny Lane or not. Uh, Adam or Gio, do you know the status of the name? I know you had put the request in, but there was some concern on the amount of names in that area. Yeah, so uh, Giovanni Federa here uh, with Federa Engineering. I know uh, the name Penny Lane was rejected, and so it's going to remain Grandview. Okay. Uh, There we go. Okay, I'd, I'd like to see the drawings change to reflect that. Oh, yeah. Touch. We can get that done. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I can't find it right now, but I know one of the pages said that the town will provide a uh, easement for the slope. And the question is, has the town provided that yet or uh, is it still in, in the works? I haven't seen any drafts yet. Uh, we had started with some draft easements to work with town's council, uh, but I have not uh, seen that on, from town side. The easement has not been finalized yet, Tony. Okay, do we have to wait for the finalization or not I don't for know the endorsement, where we can... Not for the endorsement part of the process, no. Mm -hmm. And which page are we actually endorsing? Um, you do actually sign them all. You might not remember because I don't think you've done this in a while. Okay. And, and just to be clear, I mean, I see, I see you obviously the name Penny Lane Subdivision, uh, but it is the Grandview Road extension. Um, if that is. Um, somewhere else in the plans, if you could just point that out. I'm not, not, uh, not seeing that on my side. I just happened to see it. Um, it's on page four. It says the road is labeled Grandview Road. I can see Pam Pam's point of having yep. it consistent from the title, but I just did happen to see it there. Oh, it's just the Penny Lane one. subdivision. It was just it's on a, page um, three. It's on okay. page four. It's on page five. It's on page six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11. Yep. All of those. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's Penny Lane right there. Yeah, I see. Everywhere. Yeah. We'll get those corrected. Great, thank you. Other questions or comments? Any questions or comments from um, anyone besides the board? No? All right. Uh, move that the CPDC approve the final subdivision plan for Grandview Road Extension for Cold Spring Road. Second. Any further discussion? Nope. All right. Uh, roll call vote. Let's start with Pam. 
There's a yes. Nick? Yes. Heather? Yes. Tony? Okay. <laughs> uh, and John, yes. Wonderful, guys. Thank you. Great. Uh, Andrew, we'll make arrangements to get make sure that the updated plans are over to you so that we can get those stamped properly. Yes, please do, because then I'll have to coordinate with board members to get those signatures. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate everyone's help. All right. Good luck. Um, so next item, um, uh, uh, approval not required plan endorsement for 17 Longview Road. Andrew, do you want me to screen share this one? Uh, if you don't mind, um, Josh Latham is also here on behalf of that. He might be able to as well. I can do it for right now. Okay. okay. Can everybody see that? Yes. Defer to Josh for details. Good evening. How are you? Josh Latham on behalf of the Cagnia family, which owns the property at 17 Longview. Um, it's an AR proposal, and really the reason is that the Cagninas have owned this property since the early 70s. They're now in their late 70s, um, and they need to downsize. I don't know if you are familiar with the home, but it's really a historic mansion. And Mr. Cagnina is just absolutely in love with his property. He does need to sell it. And he's exploring um, potential historic restrictions and other ways of protecting the home. At the same time, he wants to protect the land behind it from uh, what he would call mass development. So his intent is to segregate the rear land, maintaining a large property for the house to be sold separately from the rear. They're going to keep the rear land in the family and that's what they're exploring, how to really take care of that property separate from selling the home. And that's what they're gonna explore going forward. The intent is to sell the home in the near future, however. But I'm happy to have, answer any other questions you might have. Thanks, Josh. Um, I, I don't have any questions, anyone from the board? Yes, I do. Uh, this in the paperwork it says it's not for building sites uh is this perkable land so it could be built on so what you say is it's not a buildable lot and that's because we don't have frontage for this back area um right. what we do know is that it is really upland this is the reading highland section of town mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mr cagnina's concern is that this could be mass developed right he does have a personal stake he's he, He's lived here for so long, he cares very much about making sure it's not. I will say that's the opposite of many of my clients. <laughs> so this is an unusual situation okay. where they want to segregate the land from the house so they can explore it more as to how they can put an appropriate um, either modest development or no development in the rear. Okay, good. Thank you. I, I have a follow-up question. Um, and, I, and I'm sorry to be dense. Um, you said that there's not enough frontage. It looks, it, is it, does it say 40 feet across on that Laneton public way? And is that enough frontage for no, the zone? That, sorry. So that's the stub, the end of, of the existing way, which leads to this portion of the site, but it doesn't have um, really more than that 40 feet. And in the S15 district, I believe we require 100, 100. 100 feet. So, okay. So anything so, that would happen back there would really have to be pursuant to a subdivision. Yeah. Oh, there's the front of Jesse. Uh, 
other questions or comments? No. And Julie or or Andrew, right? I, I presume. I, I'm not sure I saw it. I'm not sure I looked for it, but um, uh, town engineer reviewed this as well and had correct. no issues. All right. Yes, correct. All right. I can screen share the memo. That's okay, Julie. I'm sure it was in there. All right, no, I, I just I lost my I, Zoom settings for yeah. some reason, but I found them. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so here it is. All right. Yeah. Moved that the CPDC endorsed the approval not required plan for 17 Longview Road. Second. All right, um, roll call vote. Um, Pam? Yes. Heather? Yes. Tony? Yes. Nick? Yes. John? Yes. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Um, next item that we have on this list is 531 Main Street, 40R. Do we have anything for that? It was added very late in the drive that they submitted a plan sheet. Um, but Rob, you can explain if you can, please. Uh, sure. Uh, Chris, did you want to say something first or should I just jump right in? Rob, I don't think Chris is on the call tonight. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry, boys. No You're leading uh, charge. Okay. Rob, I'm just going to enable you to screen share. Just give me one. Second. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know. Um, okay. You should be able to screen share now. All right. Can everyone see? Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. So we, um, you know, last we left off, um, we uh, went back and looked at trying to improve some of the colors and get a little more balance um, and, uh, you know, finalize the different products we were planning to use. Um, so this is a, uh, a rendering of the uh, kind of upper floor area of the building. So I'll just run through real quick what we, what we have. Um, you know, it's very similar to what we last proposed. Uh, we're still doing the limestone finish in the front of the building. Uh, we have the hardware reveal panels here. Um, a change in this section, we actually uh, darken these up a little bit to create a contrast between the limestone. Um, we have these lighter um, hard, hardy board um, clabbered bump outs here in the lighter color. And then the recesses with the balconies, we did the darker, also hardy board clabbered. Um, so, um, you know, a lot of the trim around here, um, we're looking to, to match the siding colors. Same thing with the dark areas. Um, we're looking to match the, uh, the lighter siding in the equipment screen at the rear. Um, again, in the front area here, looking to match the roof edges basically to match the color of the limestone. Same thing with the windows in the, the retail and lobby area would, would actually match the color of the limestone. And then other windows in the, the building would looking to do a, a black color. Um, and just to kind of zoom in on here, just showing uh, more of a close up of the front of the, uh, the building. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, our big, our big focus in, in this exercise was to try to create contrast between this upper residential area and then the lower retail. Um, so, uh, just to kind of highlight some of the main materials this brick color, which you can see. Uh, on this lower band here uh, at the uh, garage level. 
we look to match the uh, building adjacent to the property where the laundry mat is located. So we do on that for some inspiration. Just using standard limestone um, color for the front and then the black for the windows. And then these are some samples of the hardy board from the uh, hardy board website. Um, so, you know, you notice in the rendering on the white color work, we're much more in this range on, uh, on this particular sample as they show in a, a, a fully shaded uh, sample. Um, and then lastly, we just did a couple renderings of, uh, you know, the, the different angles that we had presented previously, uh, just to, to have a reference. But, you know, this is kind of the main close-up of, of what the color is going to be. So that's, uh, that's all I have. If anybody has any questions or comments? You showed two different colors for the hardy board. Two different yeah. grays, anyways. What's the intent there? Um, just to create some contrast. Um, you know, these areas where we have the um, <clears throat> the balconies, we did in the darker color, and then we had these bump outs in the lighter color. So we just kind of wanted to, to create some visual interest and, and try to uh, create some contrast along the, the uh, facade. So are the two projecting pieces towards the back, those, those eight window sections, is that supposed to be the same color as the piece in the front above the limestone? Um, these, these, this right here? Yeah. The same as the limestone? Well, no, I mean, the piece above the limestone, the, yes, the block at the corner, that's gray, right? I mean, that's obviously gray, but the two sections in the back look more like buff than they do like gray. These two sections right here. Yeah, these are more of a, a, a lighter color, yeah. Well, no, you're not answering my question. So. You've got two two colors of gray clapboard siding. Are the three main blocks the same color? Because the rendering shows me three different colors or two different colors. Yeah, this is this is a, a, a call it a medium gray. There's a dark darker panel in the recesses, and then a lighter color on these bump outs. Okay, so is the that... front piece is the panel system, and the two pieces in the back is the clapboards. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. All right. And what happens around the corner? Um, on the east side. So this is that darker color comes around and then we have these lighter, these are those lighter bump outs. And then this is that stair area. So that has the lighter color as well. Do we know what's happening on the south? Cause that's a pretty big facade. Um, yeah, I mean, this angle actually gets blocked by buildings and everything, but essentially we have the front gray colors and then we have a darker area here with the stair tower and then The rest of it from there to the south to the east corner is the same color. Uh, it actually alternates. Let me. Um, it does. Okay. Yeah. Let me bring up. The so this is the lighter color, and then lighter, and these are. Dark. Okay. Thank you. Did you actually deliver any physical samples to Julie and Andrew? No, we don't, but I have them, so I can I can get them to her. We definitely will want that. That's been okay. an issue before for us. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we. I mean, we picked out specific colors for these, right. so we can deliver them and answer your question. I guess I, I, I'll say that, um, you know, with the, um, you know, it'll be nice on the, on the, the, the front and the bottom with a natural stone, right? That's actual limestone, right? Yeah. So um, even though that's not right, limestone is sort of, um, doesn't have a lot of, um, texture or interest it'll be nice because you'll know you know it's it's natural but to me the combination of that sort of um um uh not exciting right natural plus the a gray panel with not a whole lot of um um uh, uh, detail there i mean it's really um, 
I don't know. It really kind of bland. Right, you've got a, 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 a light sort of, um, I, I don't want to call limestone dull, but it's it's a dull dull rock color, right? Natural color. Mm -hmm. And then you've yeah. got gray panels that don't have, you know, they're just gray panels, right? And then, you know, flat windows and not much up at the top. Um, you know, it looks, it, it looks very um, boxy, dull. I guess. Um, if I could, though, um, if somebody could call up the uh, the building at Green and Main that just went up recently, I think it's the same panel system, right? It's the same hardy plank. I believe so. And so I think you can see the joints better in the real photo from Street View than you can from this rendering, because I'm assuming you're going to have about, about a half inch joint between yeah, the panels. Can... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so they'll be uh, the rendering is kind of trying to fake that, right? But if you look at a picture of that mm -hmm. building at Main and Green, I think you'll get a better sense for what the system looks okay. like. I don't know if anybody can call that up. And I, I think that we'll get a little more reflection off that glass as well. I don't think it will be as black. If you look again, the picture from mm -hmm. Street View, you get reflections of the houses across the street and you're getting some sky in it. I'm curious, Nick, do you mean reflection off the top windows as well as the lower level windows? Well, all of them, depending on what your angle is, right? Um, all right do I have to do this? I'll share it. You guys are pain. I have it. I just need him to stop. Okay, I can stop you. Sure. So yell, yell at him. I'm not going to interrupt. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Every time. All right, go for it. Right. If you look at it from the north, looking south at the corner of where Drew's is going to be. Yeah, so go north, right, and then come and look back south. Right, so that, that's really more what the glass is going to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can see the panels. You can see that there's a definite joint system in there. It's not just this big plant thing. I think that's a more realistic look at it. Now, you, you may still not like that big mass up there, and that's good. You can talk about that. But this is more what the panel system should gotcha. look like. Yeah. Well. I guess my my point here is in right is this my oh yeah yeah um, is in this just in this image right you've got that panel system which is great because it has the right I, I see what you're saying Nick with the um, with the um, with the joints and the windows pop a little bit more because it's no, not so black but you've also got a lot of different contrast here with the the brick, which has, you know, sort of natural interest because of the variations and the, you know, and the, the joints and then, you know, the windows and the, the black panels around the windows. And I guess I don't, you know, it, it may be the, the rendering and it may not be, but, you know, limestone, there's not a whole lot of interest there. The, the panels, not a whole lot of interest. It's, it, you know, there's not, to, to me, when I look at that other rendering, there's, you know, there's nothing that he he's that they're doing with color that um, that adds any more interest, right? It's tan and gray and black, um, and I don't know. I I may be off base here. It's not not my thing, but. And the cornice is kind of heavy and it sort of sets this table and then the big block sits on top of it. If the cornice broke up maybe, or if, if the top block came down into the limestone or the oh, limestone okay. went up into the block, right? You, you expect that cornice to be constructed out of just um, carpentry, metal. 
Can you pull it back up, Rob? Yeah, so like if there were a break between the window, the, if we're looking at the limestone, there's a grouping of windows, three on the left and then five on the right. If the, that that cornice might just be too heavy, might project out too much. It, it's probably gonna be something simpler, but if there were a break that came back down so that the, so that the top block integrated more with it rather than just sat on top of it potentially. As in this this coming down, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. maybe not all the way down, you know, but mm -hmm. somehow so that they started to integrate. And I think if the I think you'll probably find it'll be easier to construct that cornice if it wasn't so large. Um, so that might help to sort of integrate the two pieces as well. Yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying here. It does get um, <laughs> some more articulation um, as a, that other design piece comes back. Um, yeah, you're, yeah we you're fading in and out. It's a similar, similar articulation from that other building. So, so no, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yep. If you did that there, and maybe the front, I can't really tell from the front from this angle, but potentially that just lets them. This is the front. Blend in. Yeah, maybe not as much opportunity to do that there. Yeah, I mean, this is the retail. I'd like to try to keep that open if possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know what, if the if the cornice, as it comes around the corner, past the retail right before it gets to the Chronicle uh, canopy if it's stepped back there potentially yeah so don't have it extend out over here really yeah like it comes across and then it just sort of steps back and it's more just maybe a small projection off of the wall that might help pull yeah. that back in <clears throat> yeah okay Let's take a look at that am i the only one who's not crazy about the black windows if I am, I'll be quiet, but I'm <laughs> but I don't know. I, I don't know if that's adding to kind of like this heavy mismatched look to me. I, I don't know if there was a reason for doing the black windows. Um, I, I, I'm, I, I also don't know how much light they'll reflect off. I, I, I kind of like the windows that are a little bit lighter and reflect more of what's around there. I'm sure for the occupants, it's probably nice to have black windows. But the frame won't do that, right? The glass is what's going to give you the reflection. I just painted all my windows black, by the way. So. Oh no! I mean, I like I like the black frame. Are these windows? And I th I was understanding that he meant the the glass was intended to be dark glass. Am I misinterpreting? No, no, the glass wouldn't be dark. It's it's just uh, okay, the way the, the rendering is picking it up, and you know the the glass will in in reality reflect, like we saw in the the, the image of the other building. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. I, yeah, I like black. Glass I get I get that. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And am I right in seeing that the rest of this building does not have a cornice on the top? If you go further down that block? Yes, this is we just put a cornice up here to kind of accent this this massing, but the rest of the building would not. Not a big cornice, but you do have to trim that out. The, yep. I think we've had a few, a few chances where they tried to not trim it out and it didn't work. I don't think it works. Yep. You say trim and roof edge, so I think you have it already capped. Yeah, there's some art. Okay. Yeah. And I, I, I think this, this particular snippet does a little bit of a dis disservice, right? Because these two stories sit on top of a, a brick story below right. it, right? And so it's not that. as, I, I get that this, this is not as boxy as it may appear, you know, um, or this looks more boxy than it may appear in real life once, once you have that brick base um, at the first floor. Yeah, okay, yeah. Right. yeah, I kind of zoomed in here to kind of yeah. capture everything. It, which makes sense is good, but I just right trying to put it all together. <laughs> okay, works for me. Other questions or comments?
All right, um, Rob. So, um, yeah, definitely. Um, right. If you can provide actual samples to, to town hall, mm -hmm. um, sure. um, you know, as, and as you move along, right. I think some of those suggestions that Nick, Nick provided, right. Those would be welcome. Um, okay. Yeah. So, you know, the, the real goal, right. The real goal here is that you're not proposing something that's, um, that's, you know, um, uh, over the top, right? And so certainly everything that you have here is is muted and, and good and, and will work, so. Okay, great. Great, thank you. Sure. Do you guys wanna to vote to like accept the materials and colors presented? Um, I Julie, I'm hesitant. I'm hesitant to do that because, right, we um, uh, we just see them on a on a screen. Um, I, um, and we've been down that road before. <laughs> well, can't we just note that the materials are in keeping with the you know the, the general intent that we've discussed throughout the process? And add the condition that the materials will be presented to the town planner or the community uh, community development director. I keep forgetting your actual title, Julie. It's okay, either one. Any and all. Okay. Okay. But I don't think that's something that needs to be voted on because it's not really an action. <laughs> noted right okay great thank you um so looking at let's see it's eight twelve. looking at our agenda we want to um discuss commission reorg and the um park committee towards the end of the meeting um Julie and Andrew, do you, would it be appropriate to talk about um, uh, remote and in-person meetings? Sure. The approach. Yeah, so um, thank you everyone for agreeing to one more, hope, or well, another, I shouldn't say one more or one final, another remote meeting while um, town is working to get set up for a hybrid um, option. The uh, select board meeting room did get equipped today with a hybrid option and I got a preview of it and it looks, I think like it's gonna work great. Um, there will obviously be probably some hiccups here and there as we figure out how things work and what works for us. And um, it's, a, it's like this um, swivel, it doesn't actually swivel. It's like, it's called the owl and it's a it's like 360 camera and it, whoever's talking, it like focuses on them and then the Zoom screen, like it connects directly to Zoom and the Zoom screen is actually split. So you can have a um, like film strip view and then also a view of who's speaking. And so it will enable anyone who is on Zoom at home to see anyone who's in the meeting room um, who's talking as well as anything that's screen shared that's on the, on the Zoom screen share, which will project right to that screen that I point over here because in town hall where I like in the select board meeting room where I sit, it's like right here, you know, the screen we used to all look at. Yep. Um, and then also anyone who's in the meeting will be able to see um, on that screen, someone who's home who wants to speak um, or someone like an applicant who's presenting. Um, so I, th I think it's gonna work out um, I was very excited by it. Um, and it doesn't seem like it's going to be a huge like technology lift for staff to like figure out because it's kind of working with the, what we already are do like are used to doing. Um, so that said, I think that you could definitely count on doing hybrid meetings. Um, you know, starting your next meeting, which is August 9th, um, if that's something you're interested in. Um, and at this time, with the um, new legislation that like modifies open meeting law. Um, we do not, we're not required to have a quorum of board members in person. So if like only two of you want to actually come to town hall, that would be fine. Um, so it's, it, there's a lot of flexibility right now. 
and that legislation extends until April 1st, 2022. So, um, and then at that time, I'm hoping like open meeting law is like amended, like in real, for real, um, so we can continue what we're doing. But um, I don't know what's in the cards for that. But, so. And the fact that somebody could present from remote, right? That just makes um, professional services so much more accessible to everyone right? Because they don't have to pay the kind of fees that are required for somebody to travel and sit in a meeting. And and so you, you might get better submittals, better applications, you know, better developed plans than you would from some scribble that, you know, some poor business owners trying to get together. That's great. And I also, we've, I've seen it in many facets of my day job realm, where allowing members of the public to also participate from home probably makes it a lot easier for a lot more people to to be engaged yeah i think it's a win on a lot of levels um and i hope it will prove that to be true and and be able to stick around beyond april and you'll have some kind of exit button, like emergency stop button. If something bad comes up on the screen, you can just kill <laughs> yeah, everything immediately. Yeah, can we still do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, so yeah, it's like the regular Zoom we've been using and actually we figured the only way we can really prevent a Zoom bombing screen sharing is if we have only the host can screen share. And so that's why now we do that and I have to enable applicants to screen share if they want to, but that prevents anyone from like taking over the screen. Um, the the audio zoom bombing is a little bit trickier to deal with, but hopefully that doesn't happen too much more. Um, I'm getting going to get actually physically zoom bombed right now. Uh, <laughs> Look at that hair. Wait, whose hair is that? <laughs> That's great. Perfect timing. So, yeah, yeah, actually. Sorry. I, <laughs> um, so, is there is there any sort of policy? Um, discussion that has happened by at the um, select board about um, about how boards sh should operate, whether in person or hybrid or or both or you know any sort of direction um, related to that yet. Um, not that I'm aware of, but I I was out for a week a couple weeks ago, and mm -hmm. it happened then, um, and the like system it just like got to right Thursday and was installed I don't know Thursday or today so I don't know um even how many other like staff are mm -hmm. aware of it yet um but I'll as as soon as I know I'll let you all know okay um, I mean what I was told when the legislation passed back in you know, mid-June was that boards could decide individually what they wanted to do okay. uh, and we just were waiting for the technology to be in place cool um so thinking about that um i would assume that we as a board we would ne need to make a decision on um on how we would proceed yep. um you know at the top of my head you know Right, I think we all we we would need to agree, and I guess the question is, you know, when new board like how often does this um, do we do we need to confirm our our approach here? But um, you know, I assume right the the options there are a couple of options, right? Um, everyone's in person, everyone's remote or hybrid, right? We need to agree, you know, just not assume um, on that. Um, uh, but the other thing I think that's probably more um, maybe more important uh, just in terms of logistics is like, are, do, are we going to set up any sort of guidelines or rules of, 
like how many people should be, you know, if, if, um, um, well, there doesn't necessarily, right. As Julie said, there doesn't necessarily need to be, um, uh, quorum in person, but I mean, just in terms of like, do you, is it okay? like, when do you need to decide what you're doing? And could it be at, you know, 655, like, oh, I'm going to go into the town hall today. And right, I because I think, right, for, for Julie and, and Andrew, right, if, if someone's going to be in town hall, then you need to be there. And right, there's some expectations of sort of what are we doing and, and what's the plan. Um, and it doesn't, right, I don't think it needs to be set up. Nope. Did we lose you? We did. Um, you just one time froze up a little bit, doing, John. Whether they're planning on doing uh, We missed some of what you just said, John, because you froze. Oh, um, just, just in the sense that, right, we need to be, we should be respectful in terms of like planning out, you know, are you going to be remote or are you going to be in in person um, and letting sure. the rest of the, the committee know what your plans are. So to that end, um, you know, between Andrew and I, at least one of us will always plan to be at town hall, like unless you guys decide you just wanna continue remote meetings forever and not do the hybrid thing. Um, but I think we'll have it so, you know, at the beginning, both of us will be there to make sure everything works okay. And then maybe transition to where one of us is home and one of us is there. Um, so you could have flexibility. You, obviously, the more notice you give us, the better, but um, you could have flexibility to change your mind. It probably wouldn't be a huge deal um, for us. I haven't really thought that through that much. Mm -hmm. um, so. Julie, wouldn't you have to um, announce the meeting as to how it's being held? Yeah, so we would post it, like we would advertise it both ways, um, you know, and then uh, do our opening remarks over, over Zoom for everybody who's, you know, on Zoom and um, yeah, be a little blend of both worlds, I guess. So for the next, I don't know, few months, should we try, I mean, just assuming it'll be hybrid in some fashion or another, and that way you can you can know how you post it. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe if you tell us how far in advance do you want us to t tell you if we're going to be in person or remote, I'll bet we can follow those requests. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I I'm right. I. Uh, I'm just imagining that, you know, what we would be awkward, I'll put it that way, is, right, if, if Andrew shows up to town hall and Andrew's the only one and then, you know, the board all decides to be remote, but then 15 people from the public show up um, to, you know, to be there Difficult. in person. Gosh, um, I was just thinking the same thing. Like, how know, awful would it be? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Right, that that that's not setting the right expectation for the for the for the public who who came there to to meet in person. You know, right. it um it would stink for Andrew that they would then need to manage that. Um, but you know, I, I I guess that's really what I was thinking. Is and I'm not sure that we would get there. Right, as long as there's one member of of the board there, I think that would be okay. But just just sort of thinking sure. how, you know, what the extremes could happen. Good thinking. We could kind of plan it out to make sure that there's, you know, you know, how many do we want to have in person? One, two, and basically take, take those shifts and make sure that we've got at least a, a, a certain minimum number of people in person. Um, depending on what yeah. perhaps our other schedules are. Yeah. Right. I think that's reasonable. There had also been talk about setting up other rooms other than the uh, select board meeting room. Uh, that way there'd be more room and people could spread out some more. 
I assume right now just the select board room and what I'll call the uh, finance committee room next door are the only ones set up? They have actually different setups. Um, and I've used both. And the one in the select board meeting room, from my my opinion, is that well, I haven't used different actual meetings, so I don't know. But I think it's going to be more flexible and give us a little bit more of what we need. Um, I think having the two rooms, like they're not on the same system, so for the requirement that like people who are attending the meeting be able to hear everyone who's speaking and and that piece, like I don't think has really been contemplated yet. Like if, they, like I don't think they've contemplated like that the conference room could be like an overflow room for the select board room and then everyone would still be visible on the same Zoom screen. Mm -hmm. um, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, exactly. So if too many people from the public show up for the select board meeting room, there's no overflow to the other room. And that would be a question of, well, what do you do with people? Do you uh, force them to go home? Do you just cram them in as best you can? Like the good old days? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that's making me feel a little gross. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, geez, I don't, I, I don't know if this is, if this is, um, I don't know if this, if my suggestion is, is breaking rules, but do you have people register in advance if they want to be there in person, not as a requirement, but so we have an idea if something is so popular that we want to suggest that people are, um, that people join from home if we can say this is going to be really busy i i say that because i have a hunch somewhere in my memory i'm thinking we can't require that people register for a meeting in advance no. but we could say right. let us know if you're interested because if it's really overflowing we'd encourage people to we need join to accommodate them. sure yeah i'd have to look into that i mean we've been advised before that meetings subject to open meeting law we can't have like that we can't make that request um but like maybe there's some way to do it but more like what you suggested, Heather. Yeah, like voluntarily. Well, the select board does it. They require anybody who would like to speak up to register, I want to say, 24 hours in advance. Wow. But yeah, and this, but the select board also doesn't have participation yet, I think. Maybe it's changed, doesn't have partic in person particip public participation in their meetings. Am I right about that? Is that changed? I believe that's still correct. Yeah, they did something kind of different, I guess, I think fairly unique um, this whole past pandemic period. Um, I'm not exactly sure um, how that was, how that came to be. Um, I guess, I guess to me, the question, Julie, will be is, um, this system is being has been put in at the town hall. Is there someplace else in the community that a similar system is going to be installed that has a bigger capacity, right? Because there's no reason that you know there's nothing to say that we have to hold our meetings in you know in in the town hall. Town hall. Um, and so maybe if there's if there's a case where we do expect that there's a going to be a bigger um, turnout than we just plan on being in a different, in that other location that has added capacity because, right, it, it, I assume that as a town, we, we need to be able to do that, right? CPDC right. is not unique um, and probably um, the select board needs to plan for that because their meetings are often yeah. larger. The library community rooms have been set up um, and have been used Good. a couple times at least um, as a hybrid, and I, I don't remember if that setup is like the one in the select board room or like the one in the conference room or something entirely different. Um, but that is something we've been thinking about, like if we have a bigger type, like event or meeting, um, we could try to book the library. So um, I'm going to suggest, right, this is as a, as a, um, uh, as a board that, um, and maybe we vote on it, but um, um, my 
recommendation would be that at least, you know, for the next, uh, I'm thinking, you know, six, let's plan ahead for the next six meetings um, that those are, um, uh, that we attempt to do those hybrid um, and, and inform Julie, you know, if you're gonna be in person or Andrew, if you're going to be in person there, or, or if you're going to do it, um, do it remotely, just, you know, well enough in advance so that, she, so that they're aware of what our plans are. Um, I'm happy to take a vote or just have a nod of heads or suggestions mm -hmm. if you want to do something different. No, I think that sounds like a plan. Thumbs up for Heather. Tony. And yeah, it doesn't uh, matter to me. I can be there and back in five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Same. <laughs> Nick, sound reasonable? Yep. All right. Great. So Thank that's you. where we'll start and then see where it goes from there, right? Good. All right. Um, it is now 8.30, did I just? Sorry. Um, and so I think we can move on to our um, next agenda item, with, which is a continued public hearing for a site plan review at 160 Hopkins Street, Gazebo Circle Pump Station. Um, and I believe there have been, right, there's been some, um, some new information, I think, and uh, I see Ryan here and um, Ben and Bruce. And um, so, right, we'll turn it straight over to Ryan. Is that fair? That's fair. Thank you. Um, so since our last meeting, we've been busy. Uh, we've had a couple site meetings, one in particular with the neighbors. Um, I think Ann is here. And uh, we met with Chuck as well, Chuck Webley um, from the neighborhood uh, with Weston and Sampson and um, Andrew was there as well. Um, and we just discussed the layout, um, the potential layout of what the, uh, the booster station is going to look like, the potential of where the driveway maybe coming down into the property. And, and um, uh, we went over the plantings and we went over in particular some of the landscaping in Ann's yard. Um, and then some of the concerns that um, the neighborhood had had uh, regarding um, sort of the placement of the booster station. So we, we took all that information back and um, we're in the process of, of, of tweaking and revising the plans. Um, I also did meet with um, two of the trustees, one in particular on a site meeting um, from Gazebo Circle to discuss a potential of uh, having the driveway come off of Gazebo Circle. Uh, we have yet to really get into that discussion as to whether or not that would be acceptable, um, but we have been playing around with some con conceptual ideas of what that may look like if that's a possibility. That was one of the um, ideas that the, the neighborhood had had. So we wanted to vet that out completely. Um, and so we did that by meeting with the trustees and uh, they've been great. Uh, outside of that, the biggest development that we've had uh, internally, um, and, and really this has been a, uh, a big effort on, on Julie's part and her staff. And I know uh, a lot of my staff has contributed to the information, but uh, we did look at the restrictions or potential restrictions that um, this parcel may or may not have had and I can really let Julie get into that if she wants to at some point, but um, it was a lot of information and really what it, what it came down to is there's no deed restrictions in particular to that property. What there is is a special permit and there's a con condition that was potentially tied to that parcel. Uh, and through digging through some of the information, we did come upon uh, a mutual release agreement and other information that that appears to have, um, well, town council is actually reviewing that right now. So 
um, anything would be an opinion at this point, but it, it, it appears that um, it, it never came to fruition and it doesn't look like the special permit um, is attached to the parcel anymore, but I can let Julie go into further detail. I don't really wanna misspeak, but um, so that that's really where we are in a nutshell. Um, I can turn it over to one of, one of someone from Weston Sampson, either Bruce or Ben, if they wanna fill in, if I missed anything. Um, I'm sure they have some more information to share. No, I think Ryan, you. Sorry, if anyone's interested in screen sharing, just let me know and I'll make you a co-host so you can do that. Thanks. Um, Ryan, I think you covered everything that um, that I can think of. We're, um, as far as our, our design, we're kind of in a holding pattern at this point. If the driveway switches to the other side of the building, that'll change a lot of what the layout within the building. So we're kind of holding off until that um, is settled. And then we'll finish the architectural because I know you wanted to see what the outside of the building would look like and rendering. So we don't have that yet because we haven't really started the, uh, or gotten into the architectural yet. So, um, but once we have an answer, we'll be able to pull that together pretty quickly. So that's where we sit for the design at this point. So pretty much about where we were at the last meeting. I did also want to point out that uh, we did have a discussion with Ann about potential plantings and things of that nature. So um, we'll have a planting plan and a landscape plan uh, um, with our site plan as well, uh, followed from that site meeting that we had with the uh, with the neighbors. We we're we're not at this moment changing the location per se of where where we're at with uh, in regards to the front or back of the parcel. So the back of the parcel is still where we're, we're looking to place the, the facility. Um, just the orientation may change based on what Bruce was just saying, based on, on how that driveway comes in. So um, we didn't really wanna produce a plan and, and, and show a plan if it's not certain yet that that can happen. Ryan, do you think after you get that plan, then you guys would stake it out because <clears throat> at that site visit, you guys talked about staking it off so we could actually like really get an idea where and how far out it was coming. Absolutely. This, this is in uh, the about it to the left of the property. Um, I forget your address, Ann. I'm right next door, 156. 156. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's uh, when we went out there. Once we know the, the final location of, of where that. Um, where that booster station is, we'll stake out all four corners uh, just to give you a sense of the size and, and the orientation of that building. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I missed the first meeting, so I'm a little behind, um, but just really quick, this is a water, potable water booster pumping station. This is not sewer. No, this is a water booster station. It, it will be above ground. So it will it will essentially look like a a garage, a house, um, and uh, essentially it will it will boost the uh, the pressure to the surrounding area, including but not limited to Gazebo Circle uh, and part of South Street and also part of Hopkins Street, with the potential of expanding to some other low pressure areas in the future. Okay, so it's it's a masonry building that's going to be clad to look like a residential, right? Bruce, concrete. Is, is, it a pre, is it a precast building? Concrete. Uh, it's right at, at this point. It's um, concrete masonry in it, so masonry with a um, <clears throat> a cladding on the outside. At this point, it would be a an architectural sh uh, shingle. Yeah, a hardy plank, essentially. Yeah. <clears throat> so, is there a generator in there? Um, not in the building that's being designed, no. This is a picture that we showed last meeting of a very similar building. This one had a generator, so it's a little bit longer. Your building will be a little bit shorter. Why, why no generator? Um, there'll be a plug-in for a portable generator, uh, but the, um, the generator is not necessary for maintaining fire flow um, because if if power did drop out, it would still be the same pressure that they receive now, which is adequate, but 
um, well, it meets standards, but just barely. So. Okay. So what size pumps are in there? Um, has yet to be determined. We just got some of the flow data. So we're going to be calculating that over the next week or so. Um, but there would be roughly, I believe, um, between five and 10 horsepower each three pumps in a, in a line. So. On VFDs, you think? That's, That's correct, pretty yeah. small. <clears throat> so you'll have air conditioning in the building? Yeah, the, the unit that you see on the end is uh, basically a, a heat pump um, dehumidification and a heat system. Um, we don't, it can get pretty warm. We just want to keep it dry. Yeah, I'm just trying to think about what you're going to do to the CMU for acoustical treatment. And if you have any louvers, what you're going to do there for acoustical treatment for so the abutters aren't listening to all that. Yeah, the uh, the unit on the end is um, the noise is equivalent to a, a typical air conditioning unit, heat pump system. Um, the only louvers will be an auxiliary, a backup fan, um, if that's needed, which would operate um, very rarely. <clears throat> so there really will be only a few decibels if you're standing outside the building, really not, not much at all. There's no, no noise that you'll hear from the motors and no generator, which is what the noise in these pump stations usually comes from as a generator. Well, I mean, those, those pumps <clears throat> ramping up and down can be kind of whiny sometimes. Right, they'll be in the, um, no, they can, right, Nick. All right, so let's, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think you need to have either um, solid filled cores or acoustic block or something to sort of eat up any potential sound. But, so okay. there's another, another concern I have, which may not impact this site. I imagine you've already done all the geo technical work on it, but mm -hmm. down the street at that pump station at the bottom of summer, right? That's a, that's a wastewater pump station, obviously. Um, but when the MWA ran that line down summer, which I think is Redfield and Wakefield once you cross over. It's like right at the base of the highway. So they ran like a 50 inch line down summer and um, they basically sucked the whole neighborhood dry and every single house settled, right? It used to be to the north of summer, those basements were all wet. And once they put this pump station in with, you know, the leakage plus all of the I would say coincidental drainage that happens along the lines, you know, just because of all of the way you put the lines in with all of the gravel and stuff. Um, they basically dried up everything coming down at the bottom of the hill and all those houses settled. So I'm wondering what what you saw for conditions geotechnically in this particular site. That doesn't look like a very deep structure, but you are running something down the, the lane. Uh, the, the building is a slab on grade. So it really is, um built the same way a standard garage would be. There'll be a spread footing that goes about four and a half feet deep. Um, don't anticipate any dewatering being necessary. Okay. Um, and we're up high, I can't see the grades, but we're up higher than the, the abutter at 156? Yeah, a little bit. The, um, there's a, a flat area where a house used to be um, long ago. It was demolished when Gazebo Circle was built, um, and it'll sit right there. <clears throat> there is a plan to um, grade the site such that any water will be channeled away from the abutting properties and down toward Hopkins Street. Okay. All right. Thank you. Nick, just, just to add, um, the original proposed plan that you see here takes into account any stormwater in, uh, infiltration that we need to um, address on the site due to the driveway coming down. That was one of the concerns uh, that I had had, but also some of the concerns that um, the neighborhood had had. So that will be addressed. Um, if we do modify the driveway, we'll just change that design to capture whatever runoff we have. But that will subsequently, if we change the driveway, will really reduce the amount of impervious area that we're adding onto the site if that is um, 
possible for us to do. So why do you, why do you need a plugin generator if you never really need it for Fireflow? I mean, if you never need the generator, why do you need a plugin? So we uh, the town the town of Reading has a trail behind generator that we use on um, at some of our uh, sewer stations and and actually some of the sewer stations that do have a permanent generator we still have a an exterior means of of, of powering that in case it, it, we have a catastrophic failure um, and the generator goes down as well or something like that but. Um, we already have the generator. It's easy enough for us to have a plug-in for a generator hookup. And so just for redundancy purposes, if we if we do have a potential fire in, in the structures in gazebo and we do need to have extra flow, uh, we can bring that generator down to boost that pressure and boost that flow. So okay. Because I mean, you know, the trail behind ones are noisier and smellier than one that you could install permanently. So if you're going to be running it regularly, that would be an annoyance, I think, to the neighbors. No, that this the the pull behind generator and, and temporary setup would be during an emergency event, um, a fire event or something like that. That would where we they would need it for a very temporary period. Okay. Ryan, you mentioned potential future. Uh, recipients of the pressurized water. Could you expand upon that, please? Um, I actually will defer to, to Bruce on that one, but the, the general area to the north of the project, there are some smaller neighborhoods um, that we can service with additional piping and replacement and valving. Um, it's not underneath this project to do that right now because it is a big build, build out to do that, but it does have the potential to go, I, I believe the Kenneth Road area and a little further down Bear Hill Road into the North Street area. Um, is that correct, Bruce? That's right. The, um, the current project just because of the way the existing water mains are configured will include the gazebo circle um, development as well as um, South Street down toward Main Street. Mm -hmm. um, as Ryan mentioned, in the future, uh, Hopkins Street down to Fairmount, Fairmount, Kenneth, and through the North Street and then back up Bear Hill, that sort of loop um, of homes could be included in the project, but it requires some uh, additional water mains to be installed um, in Hopkins, or excuse me, in um, yeah, and Hopkins and Cedar down to Fairmont and also in Bear Hill Road. So that that's not part of the plan at this point, but in the future there, we we're planning for that in, in terms of adequate pump capacity and such that um, the system could be expanded to include include those areas. Essentially, we're trying to capture as much of the higher elevation area that receives um, lower than what most people like to see for water pressure. All right, but that would be strictly for the town of Reading. It would not cross over to any places in Wakefield, correct? That's, that's correct. correct if, yeah, I believe so. If, and if you're asking, the town decided at some point in the future to do that, but there is no plan for that. Now. On your yeah, I'm going to hold off until Ryan gets back. I think he got a call he needed to grab, but um, and uh, Julie, maybe you can you can answer this right. I uh, uh, my impression right on where we are with this is that there are, there are two sort of primary um, open issues here. Um, one is right the configuration in, uh, of the of the driveway. Um, but the other is the work that you've been spearheading, I guess, truly um, in trying to understand what sort of restrictions, if any, um, uh, are still remain on this property and, and what, um, uh, 
even if there aren't any restrictions, was there an intent um, to do something different uh, with this property that we should be, be honoring? Um, and my understanding, Julie, is that right, you're, you have uh, dug out a, a, a lot of background there and has provided that to town council and they're there in the process of, um, of reviewing that to understand what we as a town or what this parcel is required to do and, and maybe even some guidance on what the intent uh, was and that would inform Ryan, I guess, um, on how that may fit in with the design or the layout here. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's correct. I can't really take credit for finding the documents though. Uh, give a shout out to some other people in town. Okay, sure, sure. <laughs> um, but I did review it all and like put together at the time, the history kind of, um, which is being reviewed by town council. And I do think it's important to note that, you know, even if it, the town isn't technically on the hook, it, you know, it's not necessarily a bad conversation to have about, you know, whether there's something that would be beneficial to the community, um, to the neighborhood. Um, you know, like you mentioned, the intent to honor um, something there, um, you know, in addition to what, if possible, also in addition to what's proposed. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it from, from what I, what, um, I read of your summary, right, there seemed to be some 10 to 15 years of discussion related to uh, the, the recreational use of this property. And it, it seems like we shouldn't just um, dismiss that, although it didn't it also, based on your summary, it didn't seem like it was con there was anything conclusive there either. But I'll I'll leave that um, <laughs> to someone who actually read, <laughs> read the information. So, and John, John, that's the intent of when we uh, when we design this is to push it to the as far back as we can to leave as much room in the front for open space purposes or whatever. Our facility will be enclosed in a fence, so um, the use of the property would be fine by us. Ryan, Ryan, this is Linda Antonora. Hello. Hi, hi, Linda. Hi, hi. If, I just wanted to say. If you wouldn't, oh. if you wouldn't mind, I think they. If you wouldn't mind just saying where you're from. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, 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 uh, Summer Village owner and trustee. And I, I just heard you. I think one of my other trustees is on the on the line, on the call, too. Um, and we just wanted to, I know I met you briefly Thursday, and I know one of my colleagues had a little more meaningful discussion. And I just, anything you need, or maybe this is an offline conversation with us, but anything else you need from us or any um, anything else we can assist with the project? Uh, absolutely. I, we're going to need to stay in close conversation um, with the trustees and and I'd, I'd love to finish that conversation with in regards to an easement and possibly the driveway coming off that um, driveway um, so we can talk offline and and keep those conversations done I know you and Neil have been great so um, I know I'll be able to get in contact with you yeah I figured that would be a separate I just didn't know if this was the forum and I think that that's what would impact on off the driveway and where it would go is that would, would affect the design structure that, that that's correct and and you know we we haven't thrown a lot at at it as far as design um we've we've looked at it as far as just sketching and, and looking some conceptual plans and we haven't really vetted it out either but in order to in order to really move forward we would need to know whether or not um the association would or the trustees would um, entertain an easement and if that's if that's a possibility then uh, we'll vet that out even further and, and really push the design a little bit more to see how that um, how that would work and how that entrant entryway would work off that driveway okay yeah we would we would like to participate in you know helping the project move forward and obviously we could have those ongoing conversations such as one as you know that we were here listening in I appreciate that thank you Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Linda. Um, any other questions or comments? All right. Um, hearing none, right? 
um, no one has their virtual hand up. Um, so, right, we'll, we'll schedule this, continue this for a, for a future meeting. Um, I guess my, uh, Ryan, you, you had to, obviously had to jump out there for a second. You know, the expectation or what I thought was the, the um, open items was, um, was one, right, just what you were talking about, figuring out whether there's another configuration for the driveway. Um, you, you all have some work to do there and then um, sort of understanding that other, you know, the other um, um, uh, potential or required uses for the, um, for the site and how that plays into what you're doing. So, um, right, and my understanding is that there's some, right, you, need, you still need feedback from town council after they review the, the information. So I would expect that during the next meeting, right, some of that we, you'd have some additional information or maybe all of that information, right, um, that, on those two items. Yeah, that's that's correct. We have a meeting later this week. And so i um, hopeful that we'll have the answer, at least on the town side, and have a game plan moving forward so we can have a meaningful discussion about it on our next meeting. And then um, we'll continue to work with the trustees and the neighbors and um, put together a, a, a plan that makes sense uh, taking into account you know, some of the concerns that the neighbors have and, and, and hopefully uh, address everything for the next meeting. Great. I, I do have one, one little question. Um, Ryan, I know when we had the site visit, um, you know, we talked about maybe that easement coming in through gazebo. Um, and I thought that you guys were maybe gonna check to see about um, being able to push it back, but you, I think you were gonna check like the, like, um, like the levels or something, if it was like too high there. And when we talked about it, it was like pretty equal to where you were talking about putting it. So I was just wondering if there was gonna be any more discussion about pushing it back a little more. And um, and I don't, I know you guys were here recently and I don't know if you looked at from like the front part of Hopkins Street, um, it, it would fit, it, I, I don't know if it will fit for sure, but if it was in the back, I mean, it would really, it wouldn't really be an eyesore. Um, and it would, it would, like you said, it would preserve even some of that hill on the top and that front. So I was just, yeah, like, oh, awesome. So like, if you're looking beyond this tree here, up to the right is where um, it's gonna go. Um, over more though, right? It's over to the other side. It's, it's, it's essentially in the center, currently right now, it's in the center of that flat area on that, that plateau. But we did, we did make note of your comment and, and um, depending on, on how the driveway comes in, we will try to push that building as far back as we can. You have to keep in mind that we, we do have to make sure that we adhere to setbacks as well. So right. we'll stay right. within that envelope that we have and right. we'll try to adjust it as much as we can. Um, the intent is really to sort of tuck it away and right. make it not really, you know, pop out so much. Um, that'll right. be a little bit difficult with the fence surrounding it, but um, okay, we're gonna yeah. try to push that back as far as we can and, and sort of hide it as much as we can. That's the intent. Cause, yeah, because it would be tucked in nice back there if we could do that, but okay. Yeah, and it, it just it just serves as actually a, a natural buffer to your, your, your property up on that upper piece. And in, in the front, there's not so much of a natural buffer that's already there. So right. that's sort of the reason why we chose up on that upper section. Okay, thank you. Um, so we will, um, right, we'll continue this to, um, to win. So um, <clears throat> it seems that most or all CPDC members are available for an August 16th meeting. So we'd be adding a meeting um, Monday, August 16th. Um, and I believe that date works for Ryan and the time we have available is 7.30. All right. Um, 
So did I hear someone make a motion to continue this to Monday, August 16th at 7.30? Second. Motion. All right. Motion to continue to yeah. August 16th, 7.30. Second. All right. Um, we'll do a roll call vote, starting with Pam. Yes. Heather. Yes. Uh, Nick. Yes. Tony. Yes. John. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, guys. Thank you. To, so the next item is um, a public hearing at 930. Do we need to, we do need to wait for that because that's an actual public hearing, right? Yeah. Um, so we're moving too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> that's rare. You can never plan these things. I know it's hard. Um, I think are we um, meeting minutes? Is that where we're at? Or is there anything else that we There's should? There's the um, park and then also the reorg if you wanted to do that. Um. Um. Well, let's take this in reverse order as it is on here. We'll do the meeting minutes and then um, and then talk about park and then reorg and see where that all gets us to, to 9.30. Sounds good. I will share the 428 meeting minutes on screen. I believe we have three total sets um, for tonight, but um, I'll start at the top and work my way through them. But if anybody has comments and reads a little faster, please feel free to shout them out. Um, quick typo, it looks like just so there on the first page, third paragraph, third line, Mrs. Mercier agreed and found such is worth noting, should be found. Thank you.
there's just another little um, typo mm -hmm. uh, on page three, the fourth paragraph, second line, approximately 3,600 square feet, just needs a space. Uh, another typo, second line of this first paragraph on this page, about instead of a but. Oh, I see what it is. Okay. But. It's, it's about the side. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
Excuse me, what minutes are we looking at right now? I can't see the file name. 428. Okay, if these are 428, you can't have a 5-0 deliberation. I was not present at this meeting. Yes, but I think we had Linda and Tony who was then able to vote. Okay.
looking at the bottom of page six. Um, this Miss Benitez stated that the outdoor dining. No, that's not it. That's your page six. Yeah. Mm, okay, hold on. It doesn't match what I'm looking at. Hold on. Oh, so it's the second paragraph, uh, third paragraph up. Miss Benita has explained. The tables, chairs are brought in and out daily as they are simply tables not eligible to be used indoors right now. I don't know what that means. Uh, because seating was limited indoors, they had tables that weren't being used, so they just brought those ones outside. They weren't new or different tables. Okay, can we get rid of the word simply? Yep. Simply, yep. merely, just, and only. Never use those words. Got it. I was thinking that as I read that too. Do we need to say that? That it's a COVID restriction? It's not really uh, a permit ex exception, right? Right. They they have a certain number of seats they're allowed in there. Um, and it's not like they're putting these outside to maintain count. It's a COVID thing, right? It, you know what I'm trying to say? I'm not saying right, it was at the time, yes. But that was the whole purpose of the bylaw to remove the COVID portion of the restrictions so that outdoor seating could apply even without the emergency um, declaration from the state. Um, this site was not impacting parking at all, but I still don't believe they were looking to increase their total seating count by any means. And I believe the bylaw prohibits the expansion of seating. If so basically, parking is required to be impacted, but. Correct. But usually they're taking up the parking spaces, so they're actually removing spaces. So if they're having seating for 100, whether it's 75 in, 25 out, or 100 in, right. they need X amount of parking. But if they're going to have outdoor seating, it tends to be taking up parking spaces, much like with um, Reading Mandarin. Mm -hmm. They lost a couple of parking spaces. I will go and switch to these five, four minutes. That's okay. Should we make a motion to approve the 428 minutes then? Sure, I'll second it. Thank you. John, you're muted. We'll come back to that motion. We'll table the motion for now. Technically, it wasn't a motion. I asked a question. Oh. <laughs> Doesn't matter. If you say all the words required in the motion, anyone can second it. Uh, we have eight minutes left, so I'll pull up five, four for now, then, um, unless there were more comments on four. No, no, let's go to five four. On page one. Search for the word handicap. It should be handicapped. P E D on the end. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay. 
That's not necessarily true, by the way. Not for parking spaces. The parking space is not handicapped. So the code terminology is typically handicap parking spaces. And he can change it back if he wishes. However, a grammatical thing, top of the second page, the pizza shop will likely be closed on Mondays. No apostrophe in Mondays. Oh. Nice.
looking at page four at that third paragraph up where it says Mr. Paladino stated that former owner isn't, isn't uh, Calaruso still the owner of the facility? I don't, don't believe so. Um, but that is something I can look to confirm. You do want to spell Calarissa correctly, however. Uh, Calarissa, right? Yeah. Let me, I'll look it up for you, Andrew. I thought I had Googled it. And, uh, since I mean. It's misspelled at the bottom as well. He shows up as the current owner, but our records could be outdated. Um, and it's C A L A R E S O. C A L A R E S O. Yeah. I think he talked about him as the owner. He was the former operator. I, I think you're you're correct. I think he does still own. Yeah, that's a good catch.
so um, that right there, that paragraph that's up where it says it starts with Mr. Weston. Mm -hmm. um, so the intent there was that um, it was uh, uh, that it was found that um, allowing residential de development in the the area would modify the state's uh, calculation for affordable zoning growth and was a reason why um, it was a reason why re uh, residential development was not allowed. Okay. Okay. I can help you word that, Andrew. Okay. Offline. I didn't look at these before the meeting. I apologize. Uh, and that one and 940s. All right. So let's um, let's vote on those two. Um, right, we do have one motion on the table, right, for approval of the four four twenty eight. Yep. Who was it? Eight four twenty eight. Um, that was five four. Five four. All right. So, um, any other discussion on the motion and the uh, four twenty eight meeting minutes? Nope. All right. Nope. Um, let's vote on that uh, with a roll call vote. Start with Pam. Yes. Nick. Yes. Heather. Yes. Tony. Yes. John, yes. All right. Um, the other meeting minutes, that was 5-4. Motion to accept the meeting minutes five, from 5-4 five, as amended. Second. Second. All right. Roll call vote. Uh, Pam? Yes. Nick? Yes. Heather? Yes. Tony? Yes. John? Yes. All right. Um, let's move um, now to our 930 agenda item. Uh, which is a public hearing for a zoning bylaw amendment uh, for November 21st town meeting uh, related to section 4.6 site plan review specifically 4.6.2 applicability and minor site plan review 4.6.3 minor site plan review um, I'll screen share the legal app really quick Pam I think that's you Okay, notice is hereby given that under MGI Chapter 40A, Section 5, the Reading Community Planning and Development Commission, CPDC, will hold a public hearing through remote and online measures on Monday, July 12th, 2021 at 930 to consider the following proposed zoning bylaw amendments in advance of the November 2021 subsequent town meeting under section 4.6 site plan review, modify the, tr the triggers that site plan review and minor site plan review within subsection 4.6.2 applicability and make minor edits to the language in sec in subsection 4.6.3 minor site plan review. Do you want me to continue? Complete drafts of the proposed amendments are available at, uh, to the public in the public service 
Department at Reading Town Hall from Monday through Thursday, 7.30 a.m. through 5.30 p.m. and are found on the town website the Thursday prior to the hearing date. Thank you, Pam. Okay. Um, Julie or Andrew, do you want to lead the discussion here? Yeah, I'll screen share the um, draft document that we were working on. Can you all see that? Um, we can. Okay. So um, we had a pretty good discussion. I forget what meeting that was, if it was June or May. Um, where we kind of hashed out a number of things and then Andrew and I went in and tried to figure out how to make what we heard fit. Um, so this, you know, this public hearing is about making changes to the thresholds for, for what triggers site plan review and minor site plan review. So we're more accurately capturing the kinds of projects that the CPDC feels like it should be reviewing. Um, so I did send this around a couple weeks ago. I got feedback from Tony, which is included in this draft that um, was shared with everybody. Um, and I, I didn't make any changes based on his comments because I wanted everyone to be able to see them and discuss them. And, um, but I did just get a chance now to like refresh my memory and go through and like think about some things. That was, glad you guys did the minutes just now. Um, so, I can go through it like from the top and just note I had a lot of questions like when we were going through this it was it's really hard to figure out like what's exactly the right wording to, to get what we want. Um, so I don't know that it's like quite there yet, but that's why we're doing this so um, and I will note also that we did um, have the town clerk send notice about this hearing to all town meeting members so. And we, we did hear from a couple of people that had questions and I, we do have some people with us tonight that might be here from town meeting. Um, so just so you know. Um, so just starting from the top, um, we put in the definition here of change of use, which is in section two. We're not proposing to change it, but it's just kind of to highlight for everybody how we currently define change of use in the bylaw, um, and which is one of the problems we've been encountering with the way that we worded site plan review thresholds is that the change of use definition doesn't match the way we were referring to change of use in section four. So um, something to be addressed. Basically change of use in the section two in the definitions, you know, is any, anything that changes from one line in the use table to another line in the use table. I'm just gonna let some into the meeting. Okay. Um, so we're not proposing to change that now. We're more proposing to change section four so it better aligns with section with this definition. Um, so in section four under applicability, um, Tony mentioned that 4621 isn't here, and that's the section about things that are exempt from site plan review. And I can add it in. It probably would be good to add it in so everyone can see that single and two family structures are exempt from site plan review, as well as like maintenance, um, like certain, certain things like that. Um, so I can add that in so everyone can see it, but we aren't, we, at this time, we weren't proposing to change anything in that section. Um, and then this first paragraph, since we're talking about change of use, we thought we should add change of use to the list of things um, that trigger site plan review, just in this like general catch-all uh, section right here. Um, and then get regarding the thresholds, um, there was discussion at the meeting we had in um, the prior discussion. Let me see, I have the date here, uh, early June, um, about attaching the threshold for parking or a change to, to parking um, to another one of the, like the, the triggers, right? So right, we had this one down here where my cursor is a separate um, and there was discussion of adding it. So what we did is we put it with the increase in gross floor area of 500 square feet or more. Um, and then we talked about whether the increase in gross floor area, floor area applied to new construction or expansion into existing space or both 
Um, and we wanted to clarify that because within this group here on the screen, we had like different interpretations of that. So that's not intended when we write zoning, but that's what often happens. So we were tried to be more clear that we meant expansion of a principal use, whether it's new construction or into an existing structure. Um, and then that that expansion that results in either the requirement for additional on site parking or the addition of two or more parking spaces to the site. And this gets a little wonky because we also talked about whether the requirement for parking alone should trigger uh, site plan review. So we have like some situations in town where parking may technically, well, I don't want to say technically, but like so within 300 feet of a municipal lot, many uses are exempt from providing parking, but if they were anywhere else in town, they would be required to provide parking. So there's the exemption piece of it. Um, and then there's circumstances where parking might be required um, or, well, let me see how I want to say that. Um, yeah, so like as things evolve and people get creative, parking may be required, but they might find another way to provide it like offsite. And we have a section in the parking bylaw that allows for an offsite arrangement. Um, so it's like it's required, but it's not being provided on site and that should still come through a review. Um, so lots there to unpack. Um, and then the other major trigger for a full site plan review would be this thing we're referring to as change of use and capitalizing because it actually matches what's how it's defined. Um, and so it would be um, within an existing institutional, commercial, or multifamily structure, if the use change, or sorry, or mixed use, we added that, um, if the use changed from uh, whatever it was to a use permitted by special permit, it would need to come through a, a full site plan review. Um, so I don't know if you want to pause and talk about those now, or if I should go through the triggers for minor site plan review, which are similar, but um, and related in some ways. John. Um, I, I think just keep keep going and then we can come back and discuss. Okay. And over here on the sidebar, lots of questions about like, does this make sense? What does this mean? What if we did it this way instead? Okay, so, um, oh, am I scrolling too fast? No, all right. So then sec the next page here um, is the, triggers for minor site plan review. So again, we added change of use to the list um, since it's something we're talking about down here. Um, and then in this case, we separated out the change to the structure. So the 500 square feet or more of a principal use be a new construction or expansion. Um, so that would be a standalone trigger on its own. Um, and then we had that same um, trigger of the parking uh, that used to be in the full site plan review section, but now it's moved down to the minor. Um, and the, the wording is the same um, as it was before, but then we added after discussion that changes that address minor pre-existing site safety or circulation issues may qualify for administrative approval. So that if there's an issue on a site that really needs to be addressed, it doesn't, and that would have like a benefit from a public safety standpoint um, or just a site function standpoint, um, that that it could potentially be done by staff um, versus coming to the CPDC. Um, and then here we talk about the change of use again, but in this case, it's from one use to a use permitted by right. Right, so for the full site plan review, it was a use permitted by special permit. And down here, it would be minor site plan review if it's to another by right use. Um, and then just like to talk about this piece a little further, um, minor site plan review has a provision below, which I'll just talk about really quick, which allows certain things to be done by staff. Um, and the way that we, like current staff deal with this is when we get a request for something, we run it by the chair and the secretary or the chair and a longstanding member of the commission um, who has a lot of the institutional knowledge of how things have worked. Um, and we get usually one or two opinions from 
the CBDC about whether they think it should be administrative or whether it should come through a full uh, a commission review. Um, so the, what we see that this could be beneficial in the instance that you have like a technically uh, the use is changing, right? It might be going from like a dry cleaner to a botanical shop. Um, and I don't know how any of you feel about that. So that's just one example, but like maybe that doesn't really have planning implications and we wouldn't want to have a chilling effect on the business, the new business that wants to come into town by saying, look, you got to come to a commission meeting. You need to give us all this documentation. Um, right. So there's examples like that that happen throughout town where it would be nice to have the ability to, to check in and say, do you think this needs to come through a full review or not? Um, so I'll go back to the list now. So um, then we have the outdoor commerce dining programming and storage, which is new and we're not removing. I just moved it down. So it's at the bottom because these other provisions that we already had here kind of like go along with the ones above. So I want to put them together. Um, so the old provisions that we used to have, I didn't really change or take out, um, but the exterior alteration of 500 square feet or more, um, and all these different things within business B. So right, right in the downtown. Um, and there's other business B zones as well, but mostly we think about the downtown when we talk about business B. Um, and then redevelopment or alteration of a site or the in interior of a building in such a manner that the proposed um, site or building function is anticipated to generate unreasonable visual or auditory impacts. So like a lot of times like an interior fit out for a business like might not trigger a parking change. It might not trigger, a, wouldn't be like 500 square feet of new space. Um, it's just like a fit out for a new use. Um, so it could be triggered by the change of use. Um, the review might be triggered by change of use or, or it might not. And so do we keep this one or don't we? But it could be, I think it could be advantageous to us uh, to have, um, if like really none of the other things get triggered, but we are like, well, this use seems really intense compared to what was there before. Um, but that's just a you know, topic for discussion. Um, and then the last one, which we have, which is an existing site that becomes a nuisance to public health, safety or welfare, um, based on certain things about the current way the site's functioning. And so in this case, like, this is helpful. So if a site that is like an ongoing problem in town decides to come in for a permit for something, we can say, look, you are, this trigger here like really applies to you. We'd like you to come to CPDC and talk about this issue. Um, I don't know how effective it really is, but I, I like that it got into through town meeting and through town council and it's in the bylaw. Um, so, That is, I think, that's all. And then we this section down here, which is another thing I should have mentioned, minor site plan review also allows for, um, which is a waiver of parking, loading, and related design requirements where appropriate. So um, if you felt that one of the changes of use or expansions or whatever was, resulted in the need for more parking, but you wanted to, like the, the way that it, the certain applications seem like it could exist without adding parking um, or loading or whatever the case may be, you would be able to waive it under the minor site plan review process, um, which I do not believe would establish a precedent. Um, I don't think waivers, waivers are pretty discretionary. Um, that was a question Tony had. So, sorry, I'm scrolling. I should have left it on, on here, but this is it. So we left it in, we're not changing it, but we want to highlight that it, it like within minor site plan review, the commission has some ability to be flexible in a couple different areas that could be helpful when we're figuring out like what should come through review and what shouldn't and what, um, what's appropriate for a change of use. So I think I'll stop there. Can you scroll back to the top? Sure.
um, I, I guess the, the one, the, I'm going to say the one major thing, Julie, that, that I, um, am thinking about and focus in on this is that is the, the wording of requirement for additional onsite parking. Um, and, um, in that nuance of, um, you know, let's, you know, um, uh, of a, of a development of a building that, that can waive their parking requirement because they happen to be, you know, right next to, uh, a, uh, municipal lot, um, and therefore, right, you know, it, are they, would they fall under this or not? You know, um, right, there's lots of cases where, where that's, um, that situation exists. And, and I, I don't think we, the intent there is to, to not address, you know, I have those properties come for site plan review. So I, it, I think that focuses on that word requirement. So were you saying that, so last time we spoke, it seemed like some of you felt like even though they're exempt, they should maybe should still come through a review. And I, it seemed like some of you felt like that and then some of you maybe didn't. And so the exemption is tricky because it's in a separate section of the bylaw. Um, that, you know, probably should be addressed on its own. Um, but are you saying that we should take that out and that, like, I, I don't, I didn't quite follow what you were saying, Don. That the way that it's written right now, I think, right, is that if, if there's a, a property that um, is, right next to a municipal lot, right? And um, um, and they change their, their use so that they require two more commercial parking spaces by the square footage that they have. So they're increasing their demand because they're increasing square footage um, within, you know, uh, within their building. Um, but, um, but that therefore it doesn't, tr don't trigger this because, uh, tech, because technically they don't require two more parking spaces because those two parking spaces are waived. John, I'm wondering, um, if, if, that awkwardness would be solved by something that's on my mind. I read this and I very much simply want like a, a reference to the parking bylaw. So section 9.1. So it'd be something like that. I don't know if this, this solves the awkwardness for you or not, mm -hmm. but it would for me um, to say something like that, re that results in the requirement for additional on-site parking or the addition of two more parking spaces per the requirements of section 2.1. Excuse me, section 9.1, um, so that we're being clear that, I mean, because it's, it, it's in that section where the, uh, where, base, where it says that if you're within 300 feet of a municipal parking lot, the parking's not required. So I'm thinking of somebody who might be um, a business owner, a small business owner, reading through this and trying to figure out, okay, what's required here? I, I would want to have that easy reference to the section where it's all pretty clearly spelled out. And to say that it's the requirement of that bylaw, not the requirement of just this section on what triggers minor site plan review. But isn't the... Uh... Isn't the exem exemption granted by the 300 foot distance? Isn't that the remedy to the requirement? So the use still requires X parking spaces. It's just that their solution allows them to use the 300 foot um, 
distance and then say that that meets the requirement. So yeah. this would require, even if somebody could then say, well, yes, I need two more spaces, but I'm within 300 feet. That's my solution. That should still require them to come in because they are obviously increasing intensity. Right. And, and I, I read it that way too, Nick, but right. That's the, uh, I could see that getting twisted over the course of years um, and that, that it being defined the other way that the waiver comes first before the requirement. I, I guess what I want to uh, establish here probably first is right. The, the discussion that led up to um, uh, putting these together at one, right. There are two conditions that we were discussing. One was if a property owner adds 500 square feet on that is, you know, let's call it pure storage, right? Um, um, then, and, and they're not intensifying the use, then really what's the, you know, what's the, what's the big deal, right? Um, uh, and that's where it's, it, if they're increasing demand or intensification of the use is where we want the, the review. And so the thinking of the two of those together, right? the demand for more parking, which sort of signals a more intensive, intensive use. I, I think that's where, how we got to where we are and anyone correct me if they were thinking something. Different. So if we change that word requirement to something else, then we can still capture that. Not the requirement for additional, maybe I, I think requirement still works if we add some language to it. But. Basically, anything that would increase the intensity of the use should get reviewed. And the way we're essentially defining the intent or defining the intensity of use is if more parking is required. 500 square feet or more. And that results in the requirement for more parking. So as John was saying, we had made that storage argument last time. So it's not just 500 square feet. It's 500 square feet. It, 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 I can see how it could, this could easily be interpreted both ways, like you guys point out. Um, just add some language. Tell them yeah. that re regardless of, you know, whether the waiver for parking is permitted something like that. Yeah, maybe it's just as simple as that. And do we... Okay. Um, I just feel like it's getting wonkier and wonkier. I mean, I know yeah. you... Well, you're duplicating effort there for additional on-site parking and the addition of two more parking, two or more parking spaces. It's just basically the addition of two or more parking spaces, despite um, waivers or exemptions. Say that again, Tony, sorry. All right, so you're saying they're required for additional on-site parking and the addition of two or more parking spaces. That's basically the same thing. So get rid of the additional on-site and just leave it at the addition of two or more parking spaces. And regardless of whether, regardless of exemptions or waivers, because the other half of it is if we've granted a waiver for parking in the past, can they then use that waiver as an excuse not to go for site plan review? what you're saying, Tony? Yeah. And then the rest of it disappears. I, I think that works. And is that's what you, that, that this is what you want. It's the BDC, this is what the BDC wants. So, okay.
I've lost track of why our number is two. It became two back in 2016, but before that it was, I think, 15. I have the history here. Oh, holy yeah. smoke. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, um, yeah, prior to the change in 2016, um, it was new construction or a change of use requiring the creation or addition of 15 or more parking spaces. Um, so it was like any amount of new construction, any change of use that required that much parking. Given, given the context that we operate in, to the requirement of two spaces in Reading is a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, um, you know, um, certainly if it requires 15, it's got to be coming through site plan review, right? Mm -hmm. There's no question of that. Um, and, um, but, you know, changing two parking spaces in, uh, down in, in downtown Reading is a lot, means you're doing something fairly substantial. Right. Yeah, and I'm just looking through the parking bylaw, and it's like, okay, it does kind of make sense. When, I, I, without going through line by line, it's like more than one, you know, yeah, which is yeah. triggered, say, for retail by like 300 square feet, which fits with the 500, yeah. you know, rest. I, it makes sense to me. I just wanted to make sure I was clear in my head and how the two was arrived at. Thank you. There is something like beautifully simple about the way it used to be, though, which I like. Like now that I'm working on the changes, I'm just like, are we making this much harder for like future staff to? You mean because you're writing it as one sentence? If you wrote it as three shorter sentences, would that be easier? I just mean like here before it was just construction or a change of use, but you know. No, requiring a new construction or change of use requiring creation or addition of 15 or more parking spaces. Right. That's, That's the same thing. <laughs> really simple and straightforward. And I feel like we have made it way more complicated than that. Um, just like, like, first of all, this amount of triggers for minor is crazy. Well, the part that the part that I mean, that is more that adds maybe more complication words, and it also adds more clarity is that part where it's expansion into an existing structure. Um, that that's the difference, between, right? Well, well, Julie, the simplicity meant that everyone in town that did anything came to cpdc right right and that's so, why we that was the impetus for changing right it, and given the the amount of, of you know stuff that's going on now there's no way we would be able to to handle it right you couldn't handle it this board couldn't handle it you know and it would just make so you know and make everyone pissed off right <laughs> and not needed right so you know, we could cast a wide net or we could be a little bit more surgical, right? Which means more words and more um, nuance. Right. And then cert like, like we've discovered some certain things like slip through the net. So yeah. then we try to like, sew the net. You're right. Net. Right, <laughs> right, right. right. Um, Given the definition as it is, you could make it a percentage increase. So uh, results in the requirement of an increase of 10% or more parking spaces for a major modification. So a small business that has 10 spaces and needs to add one might be big, might actually, because it's downtown in a small area, they started with small, maybe more impactful than a big one that increases by five spaces. It's true. That is true. I'm just trying to think about whether, you, you know, even a big one that increases by 
four spaces. Um, I, I'm just right. You, you use five, so you know I, um, four would would fall under the the radar there. You know that what's that? That's um that's a almost a three six. Um, it's twelve hundred square feet. You know, th yeah. that's that's big for Reading, right? In all, except for maybe you know one or two areas. So, um, I would I I think we would want as a community we would want you know twelve hundred square foot of new development coming through a site plan review. Right, and if 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 uh, I'm going to say, you know, like if um, the the Home Depot development, or you know, or or you know, one of the bigger sites in in town puts on something like that, then we'd probably want it, even if it was small, because they'd be doing something else. I I, I sort of like where we're at, personally. It doesn't mean everyone needs to agree, but I think you had mentioned before, John, that what if they aren't required to add parking, but do it anyways? Like, what if they tear down a portion and add parking? I think under this language, they wouldn't trigger site plan review. But that's where we get to minor, right? Right, and that's what yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. In minor, um, you might just want to add the word addition to be there. Which one? To be an addition, change of layout to two or more parking spit of tour, where it however you want, but just. Change to the layout, location, or addition of two or more parking spaces. Of, yeah. So should we talk about these now? Sure. Or I, I, I don't, did uh, did people have comments about the other ones? Other comments? Julie, could you scroll back up just for a second? Mm -hmm. Nope. No more. Ch no more changes. I have a question um, on B, where we say changes that address minor pre-existing site safety or circulation may qualify for administrative approval. Um, as phrased, what if an applicant says, "Well, it should this this is uh, this is um, addressing a safety problem, so it should get administrative approval." And Julie says, "Well, no, it's not." it doesn't qualify for administrative approval. Does the language as written without any other 
criteria for what qualifies for administrative approval or are the qualifications somewhere else? Is, is that, mm -hmm. did that eventually get you into trouble? Should, should, uh, I'm gonna answer one of those, should the word exclusively be added to that um, sentence? Changes that exclusively address minor pre-existing site safety and circulation. I think that's good. And then Heather, right here, where my cursor is, is right. Oh, that's right. Administrative approval. And typically, like we ask someone on CPDC for, for feedback. And we give lots of opinions on what we think, but we ask for feedback and an ultimate like determination that that's okay. All right. Do do you like adding the word exclusively? I I think that helps. I do. So Julie, you have some questions up there. Have have they been answered through our discussion so far? They're, um, I don't wanna say rhetorical, but I, they're, um, they're questions that I think, given the way that this is worded and the conversations that we had in early June, I think it would be hard for staff to actually answer. And so I wanted to know like if you, that's my take on it. And I want to know if you felt like you could interpret how you would interpret this, if you could answer that question. Oh. That's why there's the smiley face. Well, so I, I thought about that some, and, you know, so I could, see, yeah, you put that with, with A, where it was an increase of gross floor area of 500 square feet or more of a principal use. Wasn't the use before a food service? And this is still... The expansion is also food service. Right. So is that actually an expansion? That's an expansion of the business, but it's not actually a change of use of the of the of the space. Right. So that would be my interpretation that I would say like the use of it was Demichi's and you know, restaurant to restaurant. Um, Well, but this isn't exclusively for change of use. We just added change of use, right? If you, it's proposed construction is an increase in floor area of a principal use expanding into an existing structure. So that would, that would trigger it. Right, like, I, I right. So I think that Like, I think, I think if that's what you want, you would want that to be triggered. We would probably need to say something like business. I, I want there to be a trigger that then allows you discretion to look at it, right? So for example, we, we talked about this two or more parking spaces and John's right. In most of the downtown businesses, two parking spaces is probably a significant increase to some sort of use, right? I mean, that's potentially what, four tables or something. But if you were to learn, if those two spaces were up on Walker's Brook, it would be insignificant and you could look at it and say, yeah, there's just, just no impact here. So I think that's where I'd like to be. I'd like to, there to be a, a lower threshold trigger that allows a review with discretion to then either do it administratively or push it to the board. So we have as a minor site plan trigger, um, with the exception of outdoor commerce, dining, programming, or storage, which always comes to you guys, um, could be done administratively the way the bylaw is written. Currently written. Mm -hmm. But that's specific to 4.6.3. 
Say that again, Tony. That is specific to 4.6.3, which is what says that minor site plan review can be administratively approved. No, why, why is it specific? The paragraph above tells you whether you need it. And then this right. paragraph here tells you whether it can just be done administratively, right? Correct. So it doesn't matter what you're saying in 4.6.2, the paragraph above, if 4.6.3 says that all minor can be approved by administratively. So there is, there is nothing that separates administration from minor. Correct. I guess the point, part of the point I was trying to make was that like the, the full site plan review does not have that. So like if you, if you wanted that to be like, like Nick said, like something that we can look at and then decide it would be, it would need to stay in, in this minor site plan review section or we'd need to add in some other mechanism. The problem as always is that while you want something to happen, it's not gonna happen in every case. And you've got to kind of cover yourself for the 80% that occur. For example, if we go with the Bunratties, I would assume that uh, based on what we see right now, Bunratties uh, would have had a increase in floor area, 500 square feet or more of responsible use uh, via expansion into an existing structure and would have required a minor site plan review. However, depending upon how they configured that additional space, it may have led to an increase of more than two parking spaces, which would bring it up to major site plan review. If because they're getting rid of the Demichi's kitchen, they can put in more tables, the total number of parking spaces are required to spaces in theory could have expanded and they would have had to do with a full site plan review. Right, but see, that's where the discretion part comes in. Staff could look at that and say, we're gonna go to full site plan review, they're exempt for that parking anyways, right? There's no sense in bringing it to full site plan. It says, right, then we're not gonna do full site plan review, right? Like we didn't word it that way. No, I'm just talking it through. Right, yeah. That's the kind of flexibility I'd like to see. Like, cause I, I guess like in my mind, I would not want Bun Ratties, which is going into an, a prior restaurant space and is downtown. And I, I would not want to bog them down with coming to CPBC. That I, I agree. Yeah. But, so what would cause them to go to site plan review, right? They would have to have how many more tables than, than, um, uh, than Demichis, you know, how much more capacity than Demichis. Um, well, if they did what Tony said, if they got rid of the entire yeah. know, food service portion of it and just did it completely tables that would probably trigger it i mean i would probably double the seating capacity right and so right there are things that come along with that that i think right that's that's not inconsistent insignificant um and i know we're right we're picking on on that not because we we thought something didn't happen right but because that's a easy right that's a, the the most recent one to to think about you know, if they if they had done it, if they had increased that much, you know, the intensity that much, you know, are they having more loading? Um, you know, how are they going to accommodate the the additional loading? Um, and the, um, you know, is there additional um, staff? The 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 timing of the staff uh, parking demands. I, I mean, there that's not inconsistent insignificant so you know I, I do think that that would have if they're just taking over that space and it's generally the same as you know uh, intensity as Demichi's yeah sure we shouldn't get in their way 
Um, but if they're going to increase it, then it should come through. And the way it's written is it would go through minor site plan review that because it's not anticipated to result, it's a, it is a good example because I think, I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but I wouldn't have wanted to bog them down with full site plan review, certainly. But do they then come to minor site plan review where they, because it's not, in, it, it wouldn't in, result in an adverse impact to the surrounding areas, it would probably, for what actually, with the actual expansion that it was, it would be granted administrative approval. And if it was more intense, hy completely hypothetically, as John is describing, then we'd have the, the department and the board would have the chance to catch that if it was something else entirely. Right. Yes, I want to talk about that intensity question for a minute, because I think that um, just like how these conversations go, like at town hall, right? So we hear that something like this is going to happen, like fun raddies, right? And with the way that the bylaw is written now, there was no trigger, right? So we can tell them that like right up front. So then they decide, yeah, they want to go ahead with it. And it's like months later, maybe, where we see what a plan looks like. Uh, we always like reserve the right, you know, to change our minds once we mm -hmm. see the plan, right, with everything. But it's just like the conversation. So, so we'd have to see the plan, talk to them about seating, know what was there before with Zamichis, how many staff they had, all the stuff. And, and then, then, you, then you might get into a conversation where they're like, okay, well, if we, what if we take, out two, take away two tables so that we're the same amount of seating as Dimitri's, like if we would even have been able to figure that out after the fact since they left in the middle of the night. Um, <laughs> like, like, it's just, I'm just trying to think this through. And then, yeah. and then they say, it's like horse trading. Then they're like, okay, well, we'll just not have the 12 tables we want to have a really successful business instead we'll have 10 and we'll so that they can try to squeeze themselves within what was there before so they don't have to then come to a full site through a full site plan review which tax on a bunch more time to their process um, and cost and and then then we have to make sure that all which you know we do tend to track these things that all the, the common vic and the liquor and all that has this, the seating that's approved right and I, I just feel like there's a lot of room there for things to not go that well, or for us, the town to be considered really difficult. Um, and then not that that's a reason not to do things, but I'm just thinking about this, talking out loud. Um, and then there's a lot of room there for them to be like, no one's looking, we're gonna add a couple tables back in, like, because we have the room for it. Um, so I, I don't know. Right, let's call a spade a spade. You know, if they have, the truth is, right, if they have 10 tables or 12 tables and Dimitri had, you know, it was like two tables over what Dimitri's had, you're absolutely right. In the end, like you go through all these things and, you know, they're gonna slip two tables in there later on. Chances are, you know, the, right? Let's get real. That's not going to make a big difference, but you have to draw the line somewhere and establish some um, some parameter because you know they could do something that is it that is dramatically more intense, right? Without having some line. So I, I guess I don't know, Julie, where you're going, like. Do you, are you advocating for not having any flexibility or? Um... So let me, can I throw in another example? Um, 
that is really hypothetical because I'm feeling bad about mentioning bun ratties over and over and yeah. again. So, so say there's, say there's a, a, a restaurant that has live music um, and they expand not to have more tables, but to have a better stage and, um, and more live music at night that's loud and all of that. That, is an expansion of the principal use? Is that a different kind of intensity that we might want to consider with noise and all of that? Um, it's different from just a restaurant expanding to another. Is something like that's I'm thinking about, okay, what are the things that we're not thinking about where yeah. a principal use could expand? And it's not just more of what they have, but actually, a, a, I don't know if that fits under change of use or not. It's an expansion of the business. You know, they're just. I'm just saying that that's the kind of thing that I think we'd want to capture without, of course, being difficult. Well, then there's the other thing about like restaurants in the downtown at when they're open at night and like many other businesses in the area aren't open at night and aren't using that parking. Um, just to throw that in there. I don't know. Right. Or let's go the other direction, right? Where, you know, they are open during the day and they, they change it into, you know, like a, a taco place, right? Where there's a lot of, you know, there's um, a lot of foot traffic in and out in, and demand for parking in the area and, you know, trash and blah, 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 you know, that sort of thing. I'm not saying that's good or bad, right? But there are different externalities than Dimitri's, which was pretty tame, right? I mean, it's people drinking coffee, right? So, um, so you know, we I guess that's the thing is that, right? It could have been something, you know, they they could they could expand into something um, that has a very different uh, externalities, and so. I think we, I, um, we need to be able to capture that stuff, even if it means that, um, that, right. It's never, it's, they're never going to be very clear, Julie, right. Until they're, until they're at the end. And even then they're not going to be very clear. <laughs> right. And it's just, it's just hard. I can be hard for their it's yeah. hard to be in the position where we have to change our story. Yeah. Hard for them to be in the position where they have to hear us change our story. Yeah. Right. Um, so I, I do want flexibility. I guess I just worry about where it is we draw the line. And Julie, I'm going to assume that this isn't an easy change. If somebody preps for a um, full site plan review and we come back and say, oh no, that's just minor. They're not really grateful because they've done all the work already. And it was a lot of work in advance as opposed to showing up the last minute and be able to just throw things away and not have to come back for stuff. I know that sounded weird, but I hope the thought got through. Well, we're, we're cutting them a break some way, Tony, because now their consultants can, um, can come to us via Zoom. That's true. <laughs> that might only last until April, though. Oh, all right. <laughs> Anything else? Um, I just don't know. This is really hard. This is actually really hard for us to when we were working on it. Well, there are so many scenarios. Well, I, I do, right, I think that, um, like I had said before, right, the, the previous, the previous to the to the current, right, cast a, a wide net that caught everything. Um, and that, um, that wasn't okay on a whole lot of different fronts. You know, it wasn't okay for us. We found ourselves being way too overwhelmed. Um, it wasn't 
okay for the business owners. It wasn't okay, you know, for a lot of reasons. So, right, I think we swung the other direction. Um, and right, we found that we were that that um, there's a lot of things that we just didn't have the ability to review. Uh, so, you know, I think this is this exactly right? Probably not. <laughs> um, but I think it gets us back in that direction where it, it, it gets us, you know, a little bit more ability to re review than we have now. So it's not, it's not going to be right on though, right? Uh, because it, there's so many different ways this, you know, uh, something could happen. Yeah, I, I just, I, I think I want to like give this a little more thought to try to, I mean, I, don't, I, I hate to like continue things because I feel like we don't need to continue this hearing, but like I, I feel like I'd like to sure. give more thought. Um, I don't know how you feel. So let's, I guess, um, before we go there, like, does anyone have anything else sort of, um, to, um, focusing in on any concerns or suggested changes, um, to what Julie's presented? Nope, I've made all the changes all right. so far. So, Julie, let's work. Let's work backwards, right? Um, from town meeting and timing, and um, you know, I, I'm always uh, um, I, right. Zoning's tricky, right? So. Um, having another chance to look at it and read it and with a different mindset is I think always beneficial. Um, so, I, you know, I, I think that makes sense if we have the, if we have the time to do that. Um, but do, do we have that time? Well, um, yeah, I mean, I was, I was thinking of this when, when I asked everyone if would be amenable to scheduling another meeting in August. So we could continue it to the August 16th meeting. Um, and that would be like the last, because you know, then it needs to go to town council and all mm -hmm. for, for the warrant. Um, I'm okay with that. I mean, I, again, you know, it's, it's always good to sleep on this stuff and, and think about it with a different lens. So if we can fit it in that, that meeting, um, and then know that we need to, you know, we, we need to make that decision then. I, I think that makes sense. Great. So it would be August 16th at 8.30 would be the time. All right. So Any do we need to uh, do a continuance? Move to continue? Mm -hmm. Second. Uh, point of order, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Should we be opening this up to the public first? Um, well, I guess um, I, I'm not sure that we closed it off to the public, but if anyone, um, <laughs> anyone uh, had any, has any questions or comments. Okay, I see no hands raised. Andrew, can you remind us can you remind me what the feedback you got from the town meeting members you heard from was? 
Um, I think a lot of them were just kind of asking what the proposed amendments were and why it was scheduled at 9.30 p.m. <laughs> um, there wasn't really any suggested targeted feedback on the language itself. Okay. Um, maybe we can reach out again to everybody and let them know that the next time we talk about it will be at 8.30 p.m. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, was there a motion already? There, there was a motion to continue this issue until uh, August, 16th, August, August 16th, right, at 8.30. At 8.30. And I'm sorry, I lost track. <laughs> <laughs> was it second? Tony, did you second that? No, did someone? I, I thought think I, I think Heather I did. It. OK, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> um, so um roll call vote um we'll start with i have a bug in my house um uh start with pam yes heather yes nick yes. Is that a yes? okay uh tony yes john yes all right um Moving forward here, uh, two more items. Um, do we want to talk um, about park next or about uh, commission reorganization? Usually commission reorganization is last is the last item on the agenda. All right. Yep. So let's talk about um, the Parking Advisory and Recommendations, recommendations Committee. Um, I, um, I guess, does everyone first know what that is and um, should we have a discussion about what that is first? I could use like a 30 second version. Sure. Give like a 30 second version, I think. <laughs> so, and we talked about it one time before, or two times before, like a while ago. Um, so the Parking Advisory and Recommendations Committee um, is going to be an advisory committee of the select board, um, ad hoc advisory committee um, that will look at the downtown parking, the regulatory landscape, um, the parking supply, the uh, utilization, um, and try to come up with a better system for a, a better methodology, I think, for managing the downtown parking system and parking supply. Um, it's, it came, it evolved out of like an effort, the staff led effort that started in um, 2019. Um, and we worked staff, the Parking Traffic Transportation Task Force, which is like planning, economic development, police, fire, engineering, DPW, whole. Um, we worked with a parking consultant um, who'd done a couple studies um, of the utilization in town. And we, we put together some recommendations and we went to select board. And um, there were a lot of discussions and questions and um, outreach and and we just got to a point where we felt like the effort really needed to come from the, from volunteers from residents from stakeholders um so we recommended the formation of the park um and it's to be comprised well it's eight of the nine members have already been appointed i think um so it's um you know seven residents that are uh, also business owners downtown um or live downtown or have an interest and in expertise in like logistics and systems management and parking and things like that. Um, and then one member of the select board and one member of CPDC. So everyone else has been appointed and CPDC now needs to talk about, about who might want to be the person from this board that sits on that. And it is subject to open meeting law. It's likely, I would say, the meetings will be night meetings. Um, and there will be staff support provided to the, to the effort. 
uh, me and potentially also others, as well as a consultant to help out when needed. Thoughts at all or other questions about what that is? No. Um, well, I'll just put it out there that that um, that's a committee that um, I would not mind um, uh, being a member of, uh, um, being nominated for. Um, I do, as you guys know, right? I I do have some parking transportation background. So um, you know, had my, my mind in, you know, thinking about downtown parking for a while. So um, I'd be, I'd be happy to, to do that and represent this group. I'd be happy to nominate you. I'll second that. All right, other, other people interested or other nominations? No. If you're going to volunteer, you're welcome right. to it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I'm sane in volunteering for that, but you know, it's 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 it will be a, a good and interesting effort. So, um, uh, let's take a roll call on that. We'll start with um, Pam. Yes, if you're going to take on that role, that would yep. be terrific. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Heather? Yes, with a thank you. Uh, Nick? Yes. Tony? Yes. John? Yes. All right. Yeah, that was easy. Thank you. So, Julie, who are you rooting for? What do you mean? In the past, you'd said you had ideas and who you'd like from the committee. I just I know what your I know what your backgrounds are and what your interests are. So I, I pretty much thought it would be John. There it is. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Um, last item, uh, commission reorg. Um, so certainly, right, I I has it been two years, full two years, right? Um, that I've been um, the chair, so definitely time for me to step down. Um, and happy to pass the the gavel um, on to, to someone else. Um, uh, I will. Uh, I'll just put it out there. I will um, uh, nominate Pam. Um, I think that you know, she, Pam, you've been on the board for three years. Yes, three and a half. Yes. Yeah, something like that. So, um, yeah, bring a, a lot of uh, insight. So, I think that you'd be you'd do great. So that's my nomination. Thank you. I second the nomination, Pam. Okay, sounds fine with me. <laughs> uh, any other nominations for chair? Nope. All right. Um, so we'll take a roll call. We'll start with um, Heather. Yes. Nick. Yes. Tony. Yes. Uh, John will say yes. Pam. I accept. Yes. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then I I I don't recall what it's officially titled now. Whether it's um, secretary or vice chair. I think we flip flopped around and um, right. do, do, Julie or Andrew, do you know what it's supposed to be? Because I thought it changed with the charter committee or something. I think it's secretary now, but I looked on the website and I wasn't able to figure it out. But whatever it is. All right. We'll call it secretary. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, uh, I, I'll nominate Heather. Second. Okay. 
<laughs> um, she said hesitantly. Yeah, right. So typically, right. Typically, um, secretary, the role, right, is first of all reading the the public notices, um, but also you know taking over that um, chair role if the chair um, uh, isn't able to attend the meeting. So. And I think it's pretty much been limited to those two functions. Mm -hmm. um, so. Thank you. Um, any other nominations? Nope. All right. Um, we'll take a roll call vote on that. Start with Pam. Yes. Tony. Yes. Nick. Yes. John, I'll say yes. Heather. Yes, thanks. All right. Okay. Excellent. All right. So those take place as of uh, our next meeting. Right. So which is August 9th. And then there's also one on August 16th, as you know. Um, and can I give a quick update now? Sure. Or do you have something else you wanted to say? I don't know. Um, any other, before we get to yours, um, uh, uh, any other comments, questions, issues? No. All right. Um, so we are, staff are looking um, to enter into a contract with MAPC for some community engagement in the fall. Um, specifically around the 40 yard district, um, downtown Parkville district. Um, since just a lot of conversations that have been happening about, about that and whether it, the zoning needs to change and, you know, all the stuff. Um, and so I just wanted to give you some dates and I can email them out. Um, we have some placeholder dates that we're looking at um, for some like community forums um, and there's a lot more details that need to be worked out, but we always kind of fig figure out the dates first and then work from there. Um, so I'll send a list, but just to give you an idea, and it's probably only going to end up being two or three of these dates, but we, if you can hold um, Tuesday, September 21st, Tuesday, October 19th, uh, Wednesday, October 20th. Monday, October 25th, Wednesday, November 3rd, and Wednesday, November 17th. Um, or hold and or let me know if like there's dates that don't work for you in the, that mix. Um, that'll help us when we kind of try to narrow down. And like I said, it's, I think it, it's gonna end up being two, maybe three of those dates. Um, and we wouldn't necessarily need like a whole commission to be there, but it, if we're talking about 40R and downtown and things like that, it would be important to have at least okay. a couple, uh, representatives who can bring, and staff will obviously bring things back to the full commission for discussion. And, and we would, the goal, one of the big overarching goals of this um, engagement would be to kind of help us figure out what we want to do with the zoning bylaw. Um, in addition to the feedback that we got at the zoning workshop in March, um, just continue that conversation, try to have it involve potentially more people than we would otherwise hear from um, and round out that picture a little bit um, with the goal of trying to bring something on that to April town meeting. Um, so Julie, I can tell you right now for myself, the uh, September 21st date, I have a, an impossible conflict with. But okay. If others, if, if I'm the only one, I'll just flag that for you right now. Okay, great. Um, thank you for letting me know. So, so yeah, there's, there'll be a lot more information to come, but I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a heads up on that. Um, and then we do, Andrew and I do anticipate being able to do a debrief of the zoning workshop feedback um, with you. I think on the August 16th meeting, we were gonna do that. Um, it's one of the reasons we wanted to add one was because it's really getting 
like every meeting we aspire to do it and then we just can't because of the amount of applications that are coming in. Um, so, but we, we wanted to do it before the fall and before we get underway with any more um, public engagement on the topic. So, because it will really help maybe guide and inform and we don't want all that great feedback we got at that workshop to kind of like be forgotten and lost in the shuffle um, of everything else. So kind of going through that with y'all would be great. Um, so we'll plan to do that on August 16th. So there you have it. Great. Thanks. Yeah, that'll, that'll be good to, to go over that. Are we really expecting to have more 40R projects? Um, there is a hearing that's going to open on August 9th for another 40R, and there's another one we got concept plans for today. Okay. Just wondering. Here's a hint. Look at the historical commission meetings. Tony, you just <laughs> I haven't checked those out. <laughs> All right, it's 11 o'clock on the dot. Maybe we can end it right there. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Good night, you guys. All right. Good night. Good night. We'll be talking, Julie.